Hey there guys and welcome to another video. So I wanted to do a 30 day reading challenge. And so this 30 day reading challenge consisted of at least 25, con so this 30, so this 30 day reading challenge consisted of 30 minutes of reading every single day and basically it could be on whatever book that I wanted it to be on. It wasn't magazines or newspapers or um, uh, news in general. This was a book that I had downloaded on my Kindle or a book that I had around the house. I think books for most of us kind of come and go in waves where it's like you have a wave of reading lots of books and then all of a sudden it kind of drops off and you don't read for a while. And my, my goal is to be much more consistent and consistency in my life is a goal. And so how can I integrate a really healthy habit such as reading, which really does add value and meaning to my life as well as adds information and growth and change and new ideas, new thoughts into my life. How can I make that a habit? And so this challenge was just basically just that, figuring out, you know, that I really do have the time, really discovering, discovering that ultimately I do have the time to sit down and read 30 minutes a day. And if it becomes a priority, then I will, I will do it. And it just so happens that having it as a challenge makes it so that I'm much more more able and willing to commit and make it happen. But after the challenge, there was several days that I didn't read and then I noticed this kind of slump of diving back into this, these kind of old routines, but luckily I've gotten back on track and really noticed the benefits, the continued benefits of, of reading every single day. I stumbled across a video that uh, Max Joseph made on YouTube about books and was totally captivated. It was so well put together. I would suggest everyone to watch it, but I will add in some of my favorite clips here. There's so many books, but not enough time. Between Netflix, podcasts, social media, binge-worthy cable shows, The New Yorker, and the 24-hour news cycle, how the fuck am I supposed to find time to pick up a book? I guess if I had to describe this feeling, it would be like the reading version of FOMO, which is just exacerbated by the staff pick section. Or those little award stickers. I can never leave the bookstore without buying at least three books. And we all know what happens to them. I want to first um, show you what you're currently doing, because that will actually stress you out in a way that I think will be helpful. This is Tim Urban. He's an entrepreneur, a TED speaker, and has a pretty influential blog called Wait But Why, which influences the likes of, well, Elon Musk. I figured if anyone could help me get perspective on my bookstore anxiety, it would be him. Okay, so how much do you read? I probably read, if I'm being honest, like a book a year. Okay, I need to qualify this. When I say one book a year, I'm just meaning one book for pleasure, simply, not for work or skimming self-help books. How, when are you, how long are you gonna live? My oldest grandparents lived till about like 90. So you have 55 years left. So let's just look at this here. All right. Okay, it's a book. So this is the book that you're gonna read this year, okay? And this is the book you're gonna read next year. And this is the book that you might not finish because you're gonna die while reading this book here, okay? This shelf here, up here, is about 55 books. This is all the books you're ever gonna read again. This is it. Let's just figure out how fast you read. I want you to read from here to that dot. Okay, go. Okay. Six minutes and 27 seconds. It felt like eternity. Okay, so you read 1,550 words in six minutes and 27 so seconds. That's 397. This worked out really nicely. You read a book in about 10 hours. Somehow I feel like you don't, but I'll, I'll give it to you. You were racing there, you were timing, but look, <laughs> how many, let's just give you the benefit of the doubt. Sleep is good, but books are better. 
George R. R. Martin. <sighs> okay, you're awake about 16 hours a day. That's 32 half hours a day. It's kind of a lot, I mean, 32 half hours, right? Currently, at 1.64 minutes a day, this is, this is what Max allots to reading now. But if you allotted one of these of every day to reading, you will become a major reader who will read 1,000 books instead of 55. Wait a minute. To read 945 more books before I die, all I need to do is read 30 minutes a day? Someone will be like, oh, my grandfather, he's this great reader. He's read everything. That's you versus being like, yeah, my grandfather literally has not read anything ever. The secret of the people who are like, yeah, here are my 10 favorite books of 2016, and you're just like, how, how do you... It's, they just do this and you don't. Tim was giving me new hope. Maybe there was a way to overcome my book anxiety after all. You wake up in the morning and you flip on an audiobook while you're brushing your teeth and making breakfast. Done, that's it. You've done your 30 minutes. If you read for two hours every Saturday, you like to wake up in the morning and you have a Saturday session in a coffee shop reading, you've just done four sevenths of your week. It's very inspiring when you realize how easy you can read a thousand. And this is at your slow ass reading rate. This also just speaks to the power of habits because if you have the right habit, that's a breeze. If you don't have the right habit, you'll do it four days in a row and then you'll take 40 days off. At 30 minutes a day, only, you can read this and War and Peace and Moby Dick and three other books. So what are the five benefits I have discovered since reading every single day? So for one, it would have to be education and knowledge and absorbing some sort of, of information every single day. It's a form of continuing education, I suppose, and just keeps your, your mind active, really and thinking and growing and expanding. Too many of us, you know, after our education, whether that be high school, college, or, you know, ma masters beyond that even, we often slump back into not reading books. And even with the growth of technology and TV watching and, you know, iPad watching and stuff on your phone, there's just so many more places in which we can entertain ourselves that maybe are of less value at times. I think in general is of less value. I would say most people would agree that if you are watching TV versus reading a book, that if you had to pick which one was likely adding more, more value and meaning and purpose into your life, that it would likely be the book. Again, totally depends on the book you choose and of course depends on what you might be watching on TV. But, I really enjoyed getting new information and knowledge and um, just ideas swirling through my, my mind on a daily basis that weren't just rooted in, um, you know, whatever was happening immediately around me. It was something totally new, something related to the topic of the book that I was reading, obviously I was interested in. So that would be the first benefit. So along the same lines, I have my second benefit, which is the time that I saved. The time I saved in terms of uh, eliminating the craving that I had for something new, something unexpected, something that I hadn't heard before. I tend to be someone who really, you know, again, loves searching out new things. And so I can get really sucked into um, researching various things as well as following the different interests that I have. And so something such as a quick search on YouTube to watch a video will send me down a whole rabbit hole of another five more videos because it's like, oh, I'm interested in that, I'm interested in that, interested in that. So. I think reading helped me so that I had no need to be looking on YouTube for what was new in my subscriptions or, um, you know, searching news sites for that one article that I, I didn't want to miss, that if I missed, it's like, you know, or I had, I wasn't scrolling through Facebook feeds, you know, that kind of stuff. It really did 
inform my life and my actions throughout the day in a really really beautiful and productive way which I appreciated because it freed up all this other time that I was like oh I'm busy or I don't have a lot of time throughout my day and yet really I had it I was just not taking advantage of the time that I had properly. So the third benefit which ties in with these other two is just how much more productive my life has become because of this. You know, you think, oh, you're reading for pleasure, or you're reading for fun, and you think, that's a waste of time. Why don't I just get on to the productive things that I have to do, or the emails I have to write, the, the website design stuff I have to do, whatever it may be. But ultimately, it's those little routines that you can establish in your life that really end up becoming the things that will keep you even more focused and using your time even more productively. And honestly, there, there hasn't been a more productive month than the month that I did this reading challenge. Um, I did it simultaneously with my journaling challenge and so both of those I guess you could attribute to my success and productivity, but there's something to reading. And I think honestly you just have to experience it in order to really get what I'm talking about. Now the last two things aren't really benefits per se, but um, things I wanted to share I guess. And the first one is just, you know, that the famous saying of a ball in motion stays in motion. Once you start it, it's so hard to stop. And honestly, I. I read through seven or eight books in um, over a month and I was adding more to my shelf. I was thinking, oh man, I'm interested in this, I'm interested in this, why don't I just buy a book and read about it? And so it just gets you in a different headspace again where you're just constantly learning and absorbing and open to new things, open to new ideas, new perspectives, new, new ways of living really you're open to change and to be honest I don't know what more you could really really want out of a out of a routine or um, something that you could add into your life because change is not something that is easy for any of us and the more the more understanding you have of the world of other people whether that be through fiction, through nonfiction, it all ultimately comes back to you and how you're ab absorbing the information. Change is inevitable. We, we can't hold too tightly to anything. Now the last benefit is my Kindle. And while this is more of a thing than it is a, a physical, um, or emotional benefit that I got from this challenge, but I just have to say that for a long time I resisted getting a Kindle because I was so stuck up in my idea, my my desire to have books, you know, around me. But as I as I recognized and understood more about you know things and their impact on you, I began to really recognize that. I don't want a lot of books around me and if I'm going to be traveling um, it really makes more sense to have a Kindle where all your books are in one place and I really don't miss the flipping of pages. I still do read other books. A couple of the books I read during this challenge were books that I had physically had with me and wanted to read. And so the Kindle basically the one other problem that I had with the Kindle was just that I didn't want the light. Um, I'm, I'm conscious of the blue light that I'm absorbing throughout the day that is not good for my eyes and for my health and so I didn't really want, um, I don't want to be write, reading on an iPad. And so the Kindle, the paper white that has the, the, the light option um, was best for me because then I can keep the light off for the most part and the the text appears just like a book and so you're not damaging your eyes by looking at artificial light or straining your eyes on artificial light. So 
ultimately I think I read more because I had the Kindle and I could see my progress and say, hey, I'm, I'm 65% done, why don't I just read until I'm 80% done and then I'll finish tomorrow or something. Um, seeing the pages and my progress really helped me get through more content faster. So I guess that's all I have for this video. I hope it was beneficial in some way. I have a kit linked below, which is basically I have my tech gear in one place and I have my book recommendations in another folder. And so you can click on my kit and you can discover the books that I would recommend based on um, the books that I've read thus far in my life. And so there's little descriptions to it and you can go ahead and purchase them and I think I get a little percentage of um, of the purchase if you do purchase it through that. Again, you definitely don't have to, but I would I think it'd be a good idea to check out the books that I recommend and if you have books that you would like to recommend, I am more than open to um, hearing them. I love reading and learning and if there's something you feel like would really resonate with me, I would love to hear about it. So yeah, you can leave that in the comments below. And again, you can join me over on Patreon. I've been making exclusive videos and podcasts and posts over there way more frequently than here. And uh, yeah, I hope I added some value to your life, to your day, and I will talk to you super soon in another video. Bye. Life is wonderful Life can be this good.